Raghunath, are you ready for this? What? The wisdom of the sages' trainings that are going on. Where? At the Eco Village, the, the Govardhan Eco Village in India. Why? To totally transform your life spiritually. Who? Who? You, me, Radha Swami's gonna be there, other great teachers are gonna be there, lots of cool people. How? You go to wisdomofthesages.com slash events. You find all the information there. Haribo. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath. And our co-host is not here today. He's taking the day off. I took a day off yesterday. I needed a break because Stu was taking a day off today. So I hate to break it to you, but you're stuck with me for one hour. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Makeover Monday. Wait, it's, it's Monday. It is Monday. It is Monday. You're it right. is Monday, but it's yes. Labor Day, so it doesn't feel like Monday. But it is Monday. You know what, Mara? My whole week has been a Makeover Monday. Do you know that? I did know that. You're doing this cleanse. How you feel? I'm doing a cleanse. I feel really good. <laughs> people, people have been writing me like, hey, it looks like your head has shrunk. I think, you know, it's all these foods, you know, that you can eat are like inflammatory foods, mm. but I've been like fasting for, this is my day six. You know, it's it, what I find is that you add one positive thing to your life and it makes you want to do another positive thing. It makes you want to do another positive thing. So after my first day of fasting, I was like, you know what? All right. I've been discouraged lately about you know, anything except yoga to do. So I got to start running. So I started running, not much. I just take a little bit in the morning, a little bit in the daytime or at the night before I go to bed. And then that increased. And I was like, you know what? My, have this kettlebell. I'm going to start learning how to use this kettlebell that's been sitting around my, I started doing kettlebells there. And I tell you, it's just one thing leads to another. And then doing like all my, I'm getting back into my uh, Abiyanga, which I usually do, but I just, you know, habits, unless they're really ingrained in you, they, you get into it, then you get away from it, then you get into it. So it's nice to, uh, it's nice to have a little a reset. It's, it's the big, it's the big Raghunath reset. You've heard about the big reset. This is the big Raghunath reset. I think it's good. To, and, 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 um, we call it a makeover Monday. Like, okay, whatever happened last week is over. What can I do to reset my life? So if you've got some ideas, you can put them on the zoom board. Welcome zoomers every day. We get a bunch of people on Zoom listening live. Um, and so, uh, and before it goes out to about 10,000 people a day. Um, but it's nice if you want to join Zoom, you can just email Mara, wisdom of the sages 108 at gmail.com. She'll give you the codes to join. Ah. You look healthy. You look like the cleanse agrees with you. You know what? It does agree with me. Yeah. I needed that day off because I did like, I did a dry fast, which is no water, Ugh. no nothing up to. So I went to bed, went through the night, and then I didn't eat, didn't take a first drink of water till 4.30 in the afternoon. And the detox is so strong. It starts to pull everything out of your cells and you get incredibly weak. And then as soon as you have anything, it sort of just brings the body back to life again. Mm. So yesterday I just needed that break. You weren't going to see the good. But you know what you do get also? is you get a more lucid, thoughtful, gentle Raghunath, a little NPR Raghunath. Wow. All right. <laughs> so, because Sue is not here, I'm going to lean into you a little bit more, Mara, today. Sure. Um, announcements, please. Uh, we have back to recovery group meeting at one o'clock today. We also right. got this. Did you see this new um, review that we got on Apple Podcasts? No, no. I said I was going to check every day, but I haven't checked. Them. Me, <laughs> you made me. people right, and then you didn't check them. It's really good. Do you mind if I read it? No. Read away. I gave it a try, and I'm hooked. I didn't know what I was looking for when I found this podcast. I just knew I needed something different to fill my life and mind than what I had been consuming. I was burnt out, exhausted. That's a great statement. Yeah. That's a great statement. I knew. Say that again. I knew, just knew I needed something different to fill my life and mine than what I've been consuming. 
yeah you could sort of get sick of the same old tastes especially mm -hmm. mundane tastes they get they get they get you know what i do sometimes can i share can i share something humiliating sometimes i'm like uh you know okay yeah, i'm ingesting a lot of krishna consciousness a lot of spiritual life a lot of lectures and stuff like that and sometimes i'll say oh i need a break from this <laughs> and i'll just dive and i'm gonna go whatever you know murder on, podcast perhaps go to some murderous <laughs> podcast real true crime or something like that and then i'll just be like i realize how low these things take your consciousness yeah how low you know what i did the other day what? because someone was like you gotta watch stranger things on netflix i was like okay straight so when my mind opened up to like you need a little chick i turned on stranger thing sure enough bodies corpses oh, it was just like well it's like everybody's absorbed in death yeah. <laughs> but but i don't think in a po i think there is a way to be absorbed in death in a positive way where you're using it as an inspiration to say hey life is short let's get let's get focused but i think we just we're creating a very morbid society where death is just like uh or or, or, or like murderous things are like very normalized okay go on Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. It's okay. Um, I was burnt out, exhausted from listening to the news cycle, overwhelmed with hearing blaming. I othering. can break this whole thing apart. I can let's rip apart. Go this. ahead. Go ahead. I'm exhausted by listening to the news cycle. Yep. Sometimes my mind says, "Okay, I think I'm. It's responsible to listen to the news." Big mistake. Big. Now, Costuba will disagree with me, but he's not on the show today. <laughs> You're never going to find objective news on the news. Good luck out there. You can't find objective news anywhere. You can't find objective news in family affairs. You know, your son says one thing, your daughter says the other thing. It happened like this. No, it happened like this. You're always getting a, 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 a lean, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, a bias, biased. a biased opinion. And therefore, yes. That's why we're training ourselves to be Brahmin so we can hear different sides. We want to hear if you're if you lean far right, you should listen to far left. And if you lean far left, you should listen to far right. And if you're somewhere in the middle, you should listen to both of them and then be able to discern. That's what we're trying to develop in in uh, the Bhagavatam is develop a discerning mind so we can take an in information and then listen to it instead of getting caught in these echo chambers. Go on. <laughs> OK. Uh all right, so overwhelmed with hearing blaming, othering, bickering, and negativity. Othering, yep. I didn't do any research about Wisdom of the Sages or the hosts of the show. I just went to the beginning and listened to the first episode. She's not hardcore. <laughs> the more I listen, she or he, we don't know. The more I listened, the more I heard ideas that resonated with me, sounded familiar to my own thoughts about how to live a kind and connected life and paths to connect with people who are also seeking satisfied and purposeful lives. For the first time, I was exposed to a spiritual path that does not focus on judgment and guilt, but instead focuses on love, connection, and offering the gifts you have to the world around you. How long should you be listening to the show for? We're getting there. I listen to the show every day and join the live broadcast on Zoom, starting each day with a dose of spiritual contemplation. Wait, she's a live one. On, she was on Zoom. She's on yep. Zoom. She's yep. here. Okay, don't, maybe don't say Could her be. name unless she... I don't know who wrote this, so it's, I won't. Okay. Okay. Starting each day with a dose of spiritual contemplation is the most effective way I've found to keep the bigger picture in mind and approach each day with an open heart. I'm, mm. taking, I'm taking my spiritual journey one day at a time and at my own pace, but feel more calm, confident, and connected to the world than I did before discovering this path because I have the right context for me personally to accept there's a loving force that connects all living things. Wow. Can I keep going? Um, if, yeah, if you think it's necessary. I mean, yeah, if you it's, think it's, it, it's still good. Okay. At the time of this writing, I've been listening for just over two months, but I feel like Bhakti has been in my head and heart for my entire life. Since listening to that is a good, that is an interesting point. That is yeah. a very, that, that Bhakti has been in your head and heart. It's like when we first sort of discover this stuff, we start to realize I've always believed this. This yeah. makes total sense. This completely, I mean, there, there are a lot of, there are definitely a lot of roadblocks. Maybe they're cultural roadblocks, the way people dress or the worship of a deity or, a, you know, um, T lock on the forehead. Um, but there, so there's some maybe cultural roadblocks, but when you actually understand the essence, 
it really resonates with like, I already believe this stuff. Of course, of course, of course, there should be a, I want to, I want to reject spirituality because it's been presented in such a, a poor way. Um, but of course, this makes total sense. Of course, there's a, a higher power. Of course, I'm part of something bigger. Of course, I'm not the center. Go on. Yeah. <clears throat> Purports on the, <laughs> on Apple, the podcast Apple podcast review. review. Since listening to that first episode, I have focused on changing the way I interact with the world, have been able to better manage chronic anxiety, and have worked through some of the worst career-related burnout I've ever experienced. Oh, that Outs- is such, that is good news. Yeah. You want to get rid of chronic anxiety? Listen to Wisdom of Sages. Bhagavatam. Get yeah. rid- <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam gets rid of chronic anxiety. Outside of the show, I've been exploring tools to make the time I spend with myself more meaningful and have deepened my yoga and meditation practice. I've been open to connecting with people in my daily life about spirituality and their connection with a higher power. I've shared this podcast with some friends and family who are at different places on their spiritual journeys and who are either dedicated to or come from different spiritual paths. They all find value in the topics discussed here. I think no matter where you're coming from, at, or on your way to, the messages and discussions shared here have deep meaning and are an important addition to the conversation about our collective values. You know, isn't that great? That's a great, that's exactly, that's a great pot. Thank you. And you know what the words out it's Amber. It's on the message board. People have been writing. Incredible. Thanks Amber. I think she's here. Yeah, she is here, Thanks, but I don't see her face. She's, she's a black square today on zoom. Um, you know, I remember for a while and this guy's still around too. You know, when I was doing the band and traveling around, um, you know, you always get a letter. Hey, thank you. You've inspired me in Bhakti. I've moved, you know, I, I moved into a temple. I've become a brahmachari or I went to India after listening to your record. And there was one guy I got a letter from that said, uh, yeah, I listened to all your records. They really inspired me on a spiritual path. And I became a um, Eastern Orthodox monk. Uh, you, you know, and uh, I think like a Trappist monk, perhaps I can't remember exactly what it was, but he was living in some monastery and, and um, he's like a hardcore singer, just like you know, a hardcore guy, just like uh, vegan trucker and AJ Sullivan. But he ended up becoming a Christian monk. And I didn't feel like that was a loss. I felt that was a win for me. That's a win. If people can do take any of information from the Bhagavatam and apply it to your own spiritual path. I'm not getting a kickback from any institution, <laughs> right? To, to make you become a Harry Krishna. There is no becoming a Harry Krishna. You're a spirit soul. That's what we forget. We're not selling a religion. We're selling yourselves. You, that's what you are. We're just, we're, we're the Bhagavatam is the great reminder of what we are. I'm not trying to make you switch costumes. Don't wear that frock. Wear our orange frocks. Don't have that, right? Like some monks have that weird haircut that goes around <laughs> sort of like a halo, a half of three quarters of a halo. I don't know what that's called. You know, don't have that kooky haircut. Have our kooky haircut. That's not a win. God couldn't care less about our costumes. The real thing is, can I wake up what I've forgotten I am? And I think there's something for every, and that's how we should learn it. And that's how we should teach it because everybody listening to right now is a teacher of this, whether you like it or not, you're giving this to somebody. You can't help it. Once you contain something, it starts to seep outside of you, whether you have a big mouth like me or a little zipped up mouth like Mara, right? Because what will happen is, you're going to be going about through the course of your day and people are going to notice things different about you. And they're going to say, what are you doing? What are you into? And you become a teacher of what you consume. So this is how we should present this uh, philosophy is the Bhagavatam is not a sec, uh, a sectarian philosophy. It's a, it's a philosophy of excavating individuality. Hey, you want to be a dedicated Christian? Good for you. I pat you on the back. A dedicated Muslim? Good for you. But you should understand beyond all of these things that as we progress on these paths, and this is an important part, and this is what the Vedas really do cover. And I'll, I'll give the Vedic, Vedic teachings this. From the get-go, 
we say this is all inclusive. We don't say, yeah, as you start to refine yourself, you start to hate other religions. You start to try to convert other people. No, that's not that's not that. That that's not saying then people might say, well, Raghunath, why do you uh, worship Radha and Krishna? And why don't you just go into church every day? Because that's not say, just like, like if I say, hey, I'm a, a I'm a heterosexual male and, and I believe women are beautiful. Right. You can say that that's an appropriate thing for me to say, but that doesn't mean I won't focus in on one person I want to explicitly care for as a spouse, because as you grow in your spiritual life, you'll become more refined in how you worship. So that's understandable too. So there, that's not a type of fanaticism. That is refining your love. I think that was a good analogy. What do you think about yeah, that, Mayor? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do you want to mention on? the upcoming retreats and stuff? Yeah, I do want to mention Chan Camp because it's happening very soon. That is September 23rd to 25th. We're going to Northern California. Miko, Stubb, and Mara come see us. A lot of great Kirtan people. Karnamrita's there. I don't know if you've ever heard Karnamrita, but go to YouTube right now. Or um, what's it called? Spotify. Yeah, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you get music. Listen to Karnamrita. She is one of my favorite all-time Kirtan singers. Maybe put her name on the board there, Mara, or somebody sure. can. But her record came out. She was one of the CDs. I played CDs back then. When my children were born. I'd play different music when they, they, because we had home births. So I had different CD music playing. Karnam Rita was one of the featured CDs, such a good CD. Um, and so she'll be there. Badahari will be there. He's great. Um, and just, you know, it's a yoga festival and kirtan and good food and good people. And I'm, I'm emceeing it. And me and Kostuba will do live, live. And uh, yeah, it's just a great to see our, all, all our California people. So chant camp, go to mandala.org, mandala.org. And also um, there is Bhakti Recovery. I want you to I want you to know Bhakti Recovery is for all people, even if you're not into recovery, but you want a chance to just work on yourself. Our Bhakti Recovery Retreat is a great, good way to dive deep into some of our like uh, issues that we carry with us that affect our uh, current life situation. This is one of the things I'm, I'm really proud of that we have we we've, we've you know rallied behind i'm really proud of the people that are taking part of it cuz sometimes it's hard to get to the point of having a good attitude in our sadhana because due to some trauma or life experience i can't trust people i find fault and criticize other people on a regular basis the basic things of the of of, of our our type of meditation Don't invent our, um, you know, uh, other our other devotees. You know, we try not to take offense. These things are sometimes so big, so so um, megalithic in people that they can't even chant the holy name properly. And sometimes it's really inner work. And Jiva G is going to lead this one. They just go into uh, steps one, two, and three. So if you're interested in digging up some of this initial trauma, find a find your uh, connection to spirit. This is a great retreat for it. It's a, a donation-based retreat. You pay something uh, for the room and board, but otherwise it's donation-based. That's the, the Bhakti Recovery Tree at Super Soul Farm, the 4th through the 7th. And that follows right up with the Wisdom of the Sages retreat, 9th. That's our autumn retreat. Very excited for that. And uh, we're hoping we get some vegan meatballs out of Yamara. Oh, okay. I didn't request them, but I'm requesting them now. Okay. Although I'm not thinking of vegan meatballs. Um, because uh, I'm fasting right now. <laughs> okay. I was going to do wheatgrass shots, but I guess I can do vegan meatballs oh, instead. Wheatgrass shots. wheatgrass shots are tough. Have you ever done wheatgrass, Mara? Yeah, it's gross. I did 20 days on wheatgrass and watermelon juice once. Watermelon juice. I get that was the de- that delicious. was the famous time that I saw the, the, kangaroo. the kangaroo, the naked kangaroo. Or I was naked in the kangaroo. That was the time we had that magic moment. It was I was on I was doing a twenty days of wheatgrass and uh, yeah, it was at the Ann Wigmore Clinic where you drink as much wheat wheatgrass as you possibly can. It's after three ounces at once, four ounces is very tough to do. Okay, all right. Um, where else are we at? Oh, we got a nugget. You have a nugget, sir. ma'am. Yeah, here's the nugget. Um, you know, this is a nugget. It's Bruce, it's Bruce Lee week, everybody. Oh, 
Bruce Lee Week was more than a like a martial artist. He was sort of like a wise man. Martial artists all love Bruce Lee because he was like he was like founder of Jeet Kune Do, his own system where he combined a lot of other systems. But he was just like a deep, wise person. And, um, you know, martial artists in one sense, you could say it's rajasic. We have a lot of martial artists out here listening to the show. Um, but. For an outsider, martial arts looks like, yeah, just a bunch of violent thugs. It's not. It's actually an inc- it's an art, just like paintings and art. It's an art, just like dancing's an art. They're skilled arts. And when you watch skilled artists fight, martial artists fight, if you're trained, just like if you're a trained painter, then you can understand art. If you're a trained musician, you can listen to re- refined music and appreciate it. If you're a trained fighter, it's the exact same thing. So Mar- there is a depth of wisdom. It's when you take something rajasic and really refine it. And then you have what's called refined rajas because ra- fighting of course is rajasic but your consciousness shouldn't be rajasic whatsoever it should be sattvic interesting concept isn't it refining those you know refining things in rajas so here's what he said it is easy to criticize and break down the spirit of others but to know yourself that takes lifetimes mm-hmm. Mm, easy to criticize and break down the spirit of others right that is common that's what that's the great american pastime it's not baseball it's sitting back and criticizing the spirit of others and when someone says i'm interested in doing this you're just like yeah i don't know about that i'm just being a realist right break the spirits they're they're the people that like the, the the clouds the dark clouds on your parade or just sit back behind their back even worse um a, a lot of our um self betterment for society is it comes from me tr- trying to micromanage the world mm. micromanage my kids micromanage uh my peers you know what's that qu- quote by goethe it was like uh have we ever had goethe week week no not yet you have to have a goethe week next week uh, Goethe was like, let everyone sweep in front of his own do- door and the whole world will be clean. Mm. Like that? Yeah, let everybody sweep in front of their own door and the whole world will be clean. It means zip up your own life. Zip up your own stuff first. Make your own bed first. It's easy to criticize and break down the spirits of others, but to know yourself takes a lifetime. That's our work in this world. The yogi, the thoughtful people, the Bruce Lees, the Goethe's of the world. I, they're not so interested. Now, then you might say, well, why? Well, why do you have gurus who correct you? Because that's part of our thing. And the gurus, the, the teacher's job shouldn't be just to give unsolic- unsolicited advice to everybody. We're not in the business of giving unsolicited advice. If someone comes to me, someone came to me yesterday and uh, they're going through something and they, and after a while I started to realize, am I doing most of the talk in here? And I, and I stopped myself. I said, listen, I'm giving you more advice than you even asked for. So forgive me. You know, she was one of my students. I was giving you more advice than you've been asking for. So forgive me. I don't give unsolicited advice. And then she corrected and said, you know, actually, please, please instruct me in this matter. So I have to check myself because I tend to like to give everybody. I tend to be this person sweeping in front of everybody else's doors or telling them, hey, you should sweep your sweep out your doorstep. So I had to check myself, and I think it's important to check ourselves when we are giving unsolicited advice to people who never asked for it. And you come off not like only the know it all and the nag, but it pushes them away from doing their own work. They'll figure it out by your example. So anyway, I had to check myself and then she corrected me. So in, in our spiritual life, it's okay to have people in your life you can go to for solicited advice. Please, what do you think about this? I'm going through this. And then the teacher sees that they're actually coming to me. They feel like I'm on this path with them, that maybe I have some insight there, so they're coming to me. And this is a, a big part, the dialectic between student and teachers and amongst peers in in our spiritual society is we have people we can relate to. And this is why we're so pushing retreats, um, academies, weekend immersions, 
um, pilgrimages. It's to create a community, to create that dialectic where there can be, um, uh, you feel uh, Bhakti Sage, Bhakti Recovery Group, where you can feel a community of uh, confidence, where I'm going to share how I feel. And Patrick comes to me and I say, hey, Patrick, and, and Patrick shares something. And I keep that in confidence. I'm not just going to blab it. And I feel like there are people I can go to when I'm down because the very worst thing I can do is bury my life, bury my feelings, bury my emotions, get into that shame cycle, push that way down. That's the very opposite of my spiritual life. That is me um, living my, uh, trying to fly my plane. Eh, I can't use that analogy. I, 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 it, it's, um, it's isolation. In isolation, there can be no healing. People think, well, I just got to get quiet. Yeah, get quiet, but you also have to be careful. Some people get quiet, they go right to their mind, and then the demons come out. Be careful when if that voice comes, I just got to be quiet. I just got to take, no, no, you got to reach out to people you can trust. Hello. Hi. You with me? I am. We're still here. Okay. Sorry, I'm taking takeaways. That's why. I'm... Yeah. You know, another thing... Uh... <laughs> Uh, another thing is uh, I wanted to mention in that regard, too, you don't want pe and, and in this Bhakti, not just Bhakti recovery, but our whole community here that we have going, the Zoom community, the whole wisdom, of the sages community, the others out there. We don't just want friends to co-sign on our bullshit. That's not what a friend is. That's not what we're asking for people to do. Just say, yeah, yeah, you're going through. No, you got to be say, you know what? I hear you. but. I hear you, but we're not saying in every time you have to correct them, but don't co-sign on their nonsense because sometimes we do get worked up and we get, and we, we can't be uh, rational thinkers. Bruce Lee week. What do you think about that? Pretty good. Sounds great. He's great. Yeah. Um, Should we dive into the Bhagavatam? Yes. Great. Now to the source of all great wisdom. I don't know what to really say, but the Bhagavatam is the essence. It's the, it is the reservoir. It's the reservoir of all, all things spirit, all metaphysical, all mystical, all magical, and of course the actual the excavation of the soul. Narayanam namaskritya naram chayeva narottamam vedim saraswatim vyasam tatojayam mudirayat. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Sri Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta Prayeshva Badrishu, Nityam Bhagavat Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Shloke, Bhakti Rabhavati, nice sticky. By regular attendance and classes on the Bhagavatam, and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Madatam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurudeva Maha I was born in ignorance, but my teachers are opening my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. It's hard not to look at that message board. <laughs> even during... <laughs> I hear you giggling e during the even during, I couldn't help it. Sean Murphy wrote... Uh, Fun fact, kangaroos are always naked. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> you can't read the message board when Kastuba's not here. I know. I, it's, I can only read it when Kastuba's here. Yeah. But when I have to talk and read it, it doesn't work. I can't multitask that hard. All right. Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Mara. Canto 4, chapter 24, text 64. Diving into the world of Lord Shiva. It's pretty interesting what's coming out of Lord Shiva's mouth. Yeah. My dear Lord, after creating your own potencies, you enter within the creation in four kinds of forms. Being within the hearts of the living entities, you know them and know how they are enjoying their senses. So the so-called happiness of this material creation is exactly like the bee's enjoyment of honey after it has been collected in the honeycomb. Do you want to explain that example? The bees? The bees yeah. The bees are, they toil. They work hard. Um, 
and they've they've got missions. Uh, let's see what Prabhupada says about it. Prabhupada says, um, let's scroll down to well, the He says B. they sting their ch- each other, right? And that's why they can't enjoy the honey. Uh, the the example of the bees is appropriate because when bees try to enjoy their honeycomb, they have to suffer the bites of other bees. I never heard that. I've never heard that. <laughs> it's amazing how like back then they just know these things. <laughs> because bees bite one another when they enjoy their honey. They are not exclusively enjoying the sweetness of the honey. This is a great analogy. Now that I know bees bite each other, I take care of bees too. For there is also there is also suffering, right? In the in the in in the in the, in the very means of collecting our honey, right? And going out and doing our work, there's so much pain. In other words, the living entity are subjected to the pains and pleasures of material enjoyment. It's not like material, right? That's just part of having a job, even a job that you love. Whereas the Supreme Personality of Godhead, knowing their plans for sense enjoyment, is aloof. In the Upanishads, the example is given of two birds on a tree. Okay. Um, uh, interesting. And then, of course, another extension of that analogy, which has been used in other parts of the Bhagavatam, is you toil very difficultly to create that honey, and then some guy comes over and takes all your honey. That is just like a material reality, is you work hard for something, and then, you know, you get sued out of the blue for like, what? Or, um, you know, uh, something happens, you know, uh, you, you somehow find, you know, there's a, you know, our septic, our septic just went out. We got to do something about our septic that it's like, it's, you get hit with the septic bill, like to get a new septic tank. That's like, uh, I was doing really good. I got my ducks in a row. Now I need a new septic or I need a new roof or st- things like that. So some type of, thing happens out there where you work to collect that honey and then all of a sudden it gets taken away that's not happening to you uh karuna's mom letty nelson uh, nancy rothman that's happening to the whole world is we toil and then all of a sudden stuff just gets taken in our toil it's just part of material existence um all right next text the bhagavatam is very quick to puncture the romance bubble of the material world not so we all sit around and become depressed. It's to wake us up to where to find our joy from. Do not invest your joy in matter. Got a lot of takeaways today, Mary. I hope you're jotting stuff down. I am, I am. You're like, I am, I am, I am. <sighs> 65. Thank you. My dear Lord. Your absolute authority cannot be directly experienced. Uh, But one who can guess by seeing the activities of the world that everything is being destroyed in due course of time. I like this. One can guess by seeing the activities of the world that everything is absolutely being destroyed in due course of time. The force of time is very strong. And everything is being destroyed by something else. Just as one animal is being eaten by another, time scatters everything exactly as the wind scatters clouds in the sky. So you can understand the universe by understanding the micro universe. And I'm not even saying micro like you need a microscope. You can, right? Because you can do that too. You can see, uh, did you hear about the world war going on? There's actually a horrible war going on between the... uh, um, the healthy bacteria and the unhealthy bacteria right now. There's a con- there's a there's a, it's like World War Three going on in some of our bodies. It's healthy versus unhealthy bacteria. Um, but there's a, so if you go with the microscope, you can find war going on. If you sit in the grass and just look at the grass, actually you can just look. I just you can look in the sky. You can see it's a war. Yesterday I saw war between the crows and the hawks. I just sitting down and sitting down trying to enjoy nature. And I realize there is like a refugees up in the sky. They're running for their lives from the hawks, you know, and then the crows come back and they, and they, and they double up and they get three crows on a hawk. And it's, if you examine the way the material world is, it's just constant war and destruction. 
we're hoping for world peace in this world. You know, it's funny because when I was a new devotee, before I was a new devotee, when I was just a hardcore kid trying to figure out life and listening to positive music, reasoning, you know, the positive power, uh, the, the positive, uh, the power of positive thinking and uh, Stephen Covey books and um, um, who's that other guy I like? There's a, who's the guy? Wayne Dyer? The... Yes! <laughs> yes, Wayne Dyer, exactly. <laughs> the people the I would page. read, you know, it, in a Napoleon Hill, it was just that type of books. And then, um, you know, the, the band, the Cro-Mags, who were influential in my life, they had a song called World Peace Can't Be Done. And I was thinking, it was just like, and for like a heavy metal kid or a hard, someone from the punk scene, and you hear a song like, yeah, world peace can't be done. Screw peace, I'm violent. You can really take that the wrong way and run with it. And when I heard that, I was like, that's such a horrible, horrible song world peace can't be done why would you rally behind that and now at fifth north of 50 years old i'm like yeah the whole world's at war that song actually made so much sense i'm not going to be able to make peace I, I, or I'm sorry, the world may never be at peace. I can never let the, hey, frogs, I want you to embrace the snakes. Hey, mice, go give that cat a big hug. I think that cat's had a change of heart. No, it's just like there may never be peace in this world. This world is a crumbling place, but there can be peace in my consciousness. There can be peace with how I work within this world, right? Anything about that, Mayor? That's great. Hashtag world peace can't be done. Chromax were right. Chromax were cro hashtag the Chromax were right. That's a fun fact for you there. Um, yeah, and again, these aren't distress. These aren't to keep us distressed and broken and sad and hopeless. There is great hope in us. They're not there. Not, it's not only great hope is like everyone listening to the show today has won the lottery. That, that's what it is. You congratulations. I want to congratulate everybody today. You've won the lottery, the spiritual lot lottery, not not because we're very qualified or, you know, we we're great renunciates. We're great um, theologians. We've studied Sanskrit or uh, or, you know, ancient Greek. To uh, We found the the no. The the the, the, the the secrets of the universe have been carefully given, landing on our lap, translated for us by masters dating back thousands of years. We are not just in debt to our teachers. We are in debt to our teachers' teachers. We are in debt to our teachers' teachers' teachers. We are in debt into our teacher 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 teachers' teachers. That's where it goes. We are in debt to people who've given up the bicker who've given up the pettiness, the minutia of material existence. They've walked away from that, dedicated themselves to spirit and written down things, written down their thoughts, their realizations, commented on the, you know, taken gurus, taken vows, taken this stuff seriously, and then passed it on to students. Not because they're proselytizers, but because people saw, I want to live like that guy. Look how she lives. That's so inspirational. I want to do that with my life. And then those people get inspired and those people share it. And this stuff that is, you know, we're sitting in our living rooms. I'm just looking at everybody's living room and they're in there, all, everybody's in their sitting place right now. I'm watching them sit. It's been trickling down for millennia and landing right in your living room. And me in my foolish state, I'm thinking, should I dive into the Bhagavatam tonight or should I flick on Hulu? That is like the decision that we are so fortunate that we have this. And it's not just it is a complete unabridged understanding of spiritual truth, no matter what religion you're in or if you're of no religion or if you're an atheist. This is for you. You have a seat at this table. Give it time. It's it, it changes you. There. Where are we? I got lost. On my, I, you know, I get into these. Blah, 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 and it just leads me, leads me away. That's great. We're on 66. All right. 
Oh, everyone stopped writing on the message board. That's because they're listening, and so that you don't read oh, it. Is that a good sign or a bad sign? I think if <laughs> no, they're not a good writing, thing. I think they're supporting you. Sign. They're supporting you rather than trying to distract you. Uh, okay, maybe that's what it is. Maybe, maybe they're <laughs> not inspired. Alrighty. Yes. Yeah, so we see. We see. Okay. Because so my point there was we see. You can understand what's going on in the universe, right? A lot of times we have this uh, statue of Shiva, Nataraj, famous, sta famous tattoo. Shiva Nataraj doing the dance. of That dance is the destruction of the universe. Shiva's destroying the universe with that dance. Just as the snake is killing the toad, Shiva's destroying this universe. That's his job. And it's not gory uh, in the sense like it's not um, like uh, like a thug. It is actually beautiful. His, his destruction is a dance. And so we can understand that we are all these marginal beings, these um, uh, uh, not marginal, fallible soldiers, as Prabhupada calls it, fallible soldiers in this world in this world that are that are all all soon to be doomed. Uh, just. Uh, Time scatters everything exactly as the wind scatters clouds in the sky. Lovely. Oh, Bhagavatam. My dear Lord, all living entities within this material world are mad after, oh, this is a good one, we're mad after planning for things. And they are always busy with a desire to do this or that. We're mad after, isn't that a, isn't that a pastime? Let's plan this. It's very easy for me to fall into planning. I'm going to go here. We're going to do this. And, I, and what I like to practice is, okay, some, you have to plan. I'm going to India. I have to plan it. I'm, I'm setting up a tour in India. I have to plan that. But immediately I have to train myself, and I've been working on myself, to step away from that and not like, we're going to go here. I'm excited for this. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for this. It's going to be great when this happens because it really just cheats me out of being here. I have to always check in to see how much pleasure am I getting from just living in the future? Because it's not real pleasure, people. It, that's not real pleasure. That is just um, living within my mind. And well, someone could say, hey, if it makes you happy, do it. No. No. Because if, if you're if you're living in the mind on a regular basis, then you're also training yourself to live in the fear in the mind. Because anxiety comes from that mind. What if this happens? Oh my God, what if that happens? I don't know. I can't trust this situation. This could happen. Ever do that? Ever live in that? So if I'm extracting all my pleasure from living in the field. I have to be able to catch myself. And I do because like, for example, I, I'm going to India, love going to India, but I like to check out of that and just be like, like three days before I go, I'll be like, Oh man, I got to, you know, wash my clothes. I got to get my suitcase. I can find my passport, stuff like that. Because, and then once I'm on the plane, then I'm, the, I'm trying to be there or else I'm training myself to live in the future. And I cheat myself out of right here, right now big part of all spiritual traditions is be here, be now. The Power of Now by Raghunath. Mayor, I didn't even finish that, did I, Mayor? Nope. We're planning. We're mad after planning things. This is due to un uncontrollable greed. <laughs> the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Shiva yeah. is just calling us all out right now. Yeah. You, know what's, you, know what's, you know what else is like that? Every type of sport that's sold to us. I, I always go after Kelly Skinner for this one, but like skiing, snowboarding, you know, right now I'm getting my son like weightlifting stuff. You know what I mean? Because he wants to get into weightlifting. So I'm like, and kettlebells and weightlifting and a bench press and stuff like that. And it's just sort of like, you're not even bench pressing yet, but you're getting into the idea of like, I need this, I need that. Let's plan this. It's not even the workout we're enjoying. It, you know, truthfully, it's one thing I really love about doing jujitsu is you're very present. You have to be present. You can't be thinking, what am I going to do later? That's all, all these like traditional arts are actually very, very sattvic. Even like something like, like you're a knitter, Mara, you're a knitter. 
Yeah. It's just damn Sutvik is ridiculous. <laughs> I sit there and that's what she does for fun. She knits. I like <laughs> it's knitting. Drive me crazy. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Jeff Eisenberg says jujitsu is meditation because you have to be mindful of the present, not get swept away by your thoughts or swept. And it diminishes the ego attachment as tapping creates humility. Good point, mm. Jeff Eisenberg. You just didn't. You just didn't. We got a whole crew. Of, we should start the Wisdom Sage of Jiu-Jitsu team. That's what we should do. <laughs> are you after planning? We, after are you planning we do the, the future, that, huh? I said, are you planning right now? <laughs> well, it's, you need a plan. You need some type of plan. That's why you have. That's why. That's why they call it Prabhu. That's why they call it the Maharaj. The Maharaj is the king. So you need leaders to who are the Raj, the kings are in passion, in Rajas, a little. And they practice their spiritual life to pull back. You're the Brahmani. The Brahmanis and the Brahmanas, they're the leaders of society. You're directing the guys with all the passion. We got a plan. Someone's got to make a plan. Or you guys would just be sitting around knitting and chanting all day. <laughs> 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 Yes, and then we're gonna make Sage engage, <laughs> marry everyone off to each other. Yeah, that's our that's our uh, that's our um, uh, what do we call it the the arranged marriage app. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. Um, all righty. I'm a little lost today. Let's see. We're still on that. Oh, oh yeah. So, Uncontrollable. So, yeah. So so I'm so what I was saying is. People get so wrapped up into purchasing weightlifting equipment, snowboarding gear. A big part of even enjoying that those sports is very little to do with on the mountain, right? Or at the gym. It's just part of the ego. I'm the guy that goes to the gym. I'm the guy that I'm the snowboarder. I'm into snowboard culture. I when I go to school, I wear my snowboard jacket and my, you know, I have all the accoutrements. I work hard to get money to buy the accoutrements. It's it, it's all to live in the mind, and this is a very very natural thing that happens in bhakti. Is we start to understand this, and we start to realize, actually, these things I loved. How much did I actually love them? It, and it starts to, um level out i do enjoy it like i do enjoy jujitsu i do and people do enjoy you know skinner g does enjoy skiing and people do enjoy snowboarding those are it's okay to enjoy those things but we start to see it in reality like we isolate that enjoyment when i'm on the mat or when i'm on the slopes from the ego that goes with all the accoutrements of the sport even even like collecting cars or you know I think you understand my point. You get my point, Mayor? Yeah. The greed. Oh, he's not letting go on this one. He's going to push it. The greed. All I have to do, Prabhu, is go into my basement and just see, like, plans for enjoyment of stuff we purchased we just never followed through with. You know what I mean? It's just like storages of nonsense of hopes to enjoy mm. although we do get a lot of enjoyment out of that ping pong table i will say <laughs> it's a good family bonding game rooney's really to... good at ping pong my my, my eight-year-old's good at ping pong yes. oh, hey moses moses is here he's been wandering behind you for the last half hour changing his joppa oh really mm -hmm. just just today mara was like you gotta adjust your camera there's always people wandering distracting <laughs> And, and there he is, distracting Moses. My 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 assistant was late today, Moses. You got an excuse? No good excuse. That's a good excuse. No good excuse. Any excuse would have been an excuse. He knows how to answer. Okay. The greed for material enjoyment is always existing in every living entity. Isn't it interesting? It's not just humans. You're not alone in this. Chickens are greedy. but your lordship is always alert and in due course of time you strike him just as a snake seizes a mouse and very easily swallows him purport 
everyone is greedy and everyone makes plans for material enjoyment in his lust for material enjoyment. Lust doesn't just mean, oh, she's sexy. L lust means I want. In the lust for material enjoyment, the living entity is described as a madman, right? Why? Because I'm living in the future and chasing the future. I'm chasing the mirage, right? If you've driven in uh, Nevada or you know California where you're going down these roads, you're like, there's the water, there's the water, there's the water, there's the puddle in the road. You get to that puddle and it moves back. This is what's happening. It's the great carrot on a stick. All these things are like this. Uh, validation, popularity. I was just writing and I'm doing the final edits of my book. Um, going the back and forth with the editors and i remember being at this stage in my life when i when our band youth of today first got signed on a record deal and you know we were kids but we got a record deal and most musicians never get a record deal most musicians never get to make any money at all and we got we mara that's funny because you know our record deal was twenty five thousand dollars now that may not sound like a lot but if you spend your entire life being in a band that never got paid anything, but it costs money to have drumsticks and drum heads and your equipment and to rent a van or to buy a van to get $25,000. That could have been like $25 million. We were like, like children. And we noticed our fame and what happened. I was, I, I, I'm really attuned to this because I was writing, editing this section of my book. You get an excitement from fame. Like, Finally, I'm being validated because what the whole material world wants desperate for validation from others. That's part of the material condition because I'm in this illusion that I think is real, that I am the center and people aren't just getting that yet. And I have to show them how clever I am, how beautiful I am, how successful I am, how wealthy I am. I have to nudge my way, push my way through to be the center of something and fame is assists in the illusion because you start developing satellites, people that are satelliting around you saying, Hey, you're really good. You're really smart. You're really wonderful. And I noticed as our band got bigger, it exasperated the pain. I wish I had the quote of the book right now because it's a good quote I said, but it was sort of like um, it exacerbated the pain because on my deepest level, there was a whisper saying that no matter how big you become, no matter how famous you become, even if you get to huge amounts of fame, there'll always be a feeling that you're an imposter. That's just the way it is because we are not the center. We are satellites of the center. And most of the time we are disconnected from that source. And our whole yoga process is to remind me of that I have significance in connection with the source. That's where I find my significance. That's where I find my joy. That's where I find my substance. That's where life becomes substantial. That's where I find my happiness. That's where I find my community within that, not with me as the center. What I get is I'm, a, I'm an incredible imposter. I'm an incredible actor. I'm an incredible showman. I've tricked so many people, but deep down, I really know my fallibility. What do you think about that, Mara? That's powerful stuff. It was powerful stuff for a 22 year old to go yeah. through. You know, and I had uh, my option. Do I keep pushing this? Because there's oh, that's what the big carrot is. Do I keep pushing this? Do I get famous and then everything will settle down maybe i gotta get a lot famous wait get like 10 notches more famous then things will be you know then then things will be a lot, a lot better or do you get from the get-go do you get just from hearing this stuff and applying this stuff from the get-go that nope there is no level the, these are all very long beautiful windy dead ends I think we're almost pain. out of time. Oh, oh wow, we are. Sorry, I oh, apologize. Okay. I'm a rant. I'm a. I'm a uh, rambler. Mm -hmm. Lord, I was born a rambling man. I didn't get to sing once today. I was just thinking that this is the first time in the whole show that you've broken out in a song. You think Hostu was not here? I'd be singing the whole song, singing the whole show. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, Mara, any takeaways today? Anything, anything useful? Yeah, do you want to cue up our ending song while I do takeaways? Oh, smart, clever, clever <laughs> lady. What's our ending song? Uh, Jai Shri Krishna by the Mayapuris. Okay, go. All right, Srimad Bhagavatam, The Great Reminder. Srimad, wait a second. Okay, um, <laughs> Mayapuris, how do they do this? Oh, I got it, okay. Can I keep going with takeaways? Or- yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we aren't selling you a religion. We're waking up your true identity. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. We're not selling you a religion. We're waking up our true identity. That was a good one. Okay. Thanks. Bhakti is all inclusive. Yep. Let everyone yep. sweep their own door. The whole world will be clean. Sweep your own door. I love that one. Let everyone sweep their own door. Let everyone sweep in front of his own door and the whole world will be clean. It's hard to Next heal. Next week, Gertha week. Yeah, let's do it. It's hard to heal in isolation. Yeah. Friends don't co-sign friends nonsense. No, I like the G-rated version. <laughs> the PG one sounds a little more be- better, actually, but uh, there are kids I listening. I think nonsense works, yeah. Uh, check yourself on giving unsolicited advice. That's you know what? That's a great practice for today. If you're if especially if you're an advice giver like me, <laughs> check yourself. Give solicited advice, not unsolicited advice. It's a big, it's a big part of lately. spiritual practice. Yeah. Some people uh, are like you. I do it all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty wise. Fame exacerbates pain. Uh huh. Don't cheat yourself out of now. Nope. You don't like that one. And that was okay. I was still on fame exacerbates pain. Oh, okay. But okay. Did you like the rhyme of that? I thought you'd like that. The what? The rhyme. Oh, almost. Fame rhyme. exacerbates pain. Yeah, it doesn't quite. It's a poor rhyme, man's rhyme. You know that, right? It's a poor yes, man's rhyme. I do. Okay. Even chickens are greedy. Oh, they're really greedy. And Cro-Mags were right. World peace can't be done. Ah, Woo! Thanks, everybody, joining us. Uh, Chant Camp, September 23rd to 25th. If you want to join us on Zoom, it's fun. Amber did. Hey, let Amber set that example. Go to, uh, go to Wisdom of the Sages on Apple Podcast. If you haven't, and I know who hasn't, I'm watching. And give us a review. Give us a five-star review. Tell us your story. And we appreciate you. I, I read them all, believe it or not. I actually just read them the other day, but that was so that must be very new. Um, it was new. I think it helps our stuff. Well, yeah. Algorithms. Algorithms. <laughs> yes. Al- algorithms are like algorithms. 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 And of course, um, wisdom of the sages.com go there check out the events bhakti recovery the fourth through the seventh wisdom of the sages retreat want to see you there um q a send your cues people send your cues if you're a zoomer send your cue and tell us you're a zoomer because we'll unmute you that would be great unmuting the zoomer yeah i think that's a new way to go because there's something cool about meeting the zoomer you know we can even have that we can call it meet the zoomer Sure. It's sort of like live, live ish. It's raining finally, Mara. I know. It's about all time. of the trees and the lawn and the plants are going to be so happy. We've been waiting for rain. <laughs>